It's been a long time coming. I think it's finally time to wrap this thing up. First things first, off camera, I polished and wet sanded the body the best I could. You guys have seen me do that before and it's a huge drain of time. So I cut all that out because this video is already pushing 30 minutes. I'm going to cut out as little as possible, but still leave enough to kind of just give you a gist of what I've done so far. As you had just seen, I've gone around the whole car with some panel line accents. And now what I'm doing is I'm just going through and doing all the screens and the mesh. And this car has a lot of that. Now, as I had mentioned a few videos ago, Fujimi had really dropped the ball on this kit. A lot of it is a carryover from the road car, and, uh, well, not a lot of it carries over from the road car. So what I'm doing is using some of that clear plastic from that same cup that I had used earlier, and I'm making myself some side markers in the backup lights. Now here in a minute, I'm going to show a screenshot, and yes, I know, I got the colors flipped around. When I turned the car over, I wasn't really paying attention, but... Luckily, Sharpie, it's real easy to clean up before it dries. So I got it fixed later. You'll see. Now I looked at this muffler a lot, and I come to the conclusion that I just do not like it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out the exhaust tips. I'm going to create a back for it. What that's going to do is create a sense of dimension and depth. Literally, we're creating depth here. Really, all I did was just fold over a piece of that for sale sign. I painted one side black, and then the other side, for whatever reason, the same color as the muffler. Once it's all assembled, you're not going to see the back, so I don't really know why I wasted my time or paint doing it. And as you can see, the paint didn't even stick that well. I just keep scraping it off with my fingernail trying to wedge that in there. Now, I don't show it, but what I had done later is I just painted the whole back of that assembly in just all black. Now, it's hard to tell on camera, but in person, you could tell that's actually deeper. It goes into a chamber, and it just looks a whole lot more realistic. I'm going to take advantage of that realism, take it one step further. And I'm going to go over all the exhaust ports with just a Sharpie, just to make everything black and uniform. Now, the thing with the Sharpie, the tip, it kind of conforms and rolls over, so to speak, over the tips. And it gives it a more realistic look, just like a real exhaust tip. And as you can see here, as I would promised earlier, the backup light and the side markers have been corrected. I also painted the backgrounds of the actual taillights themselves. Not really sure why I'm talking about that right now though. Just look at this sexy muffler. But, uh, yeah, let's talk about those taillights. For those of you that have been around a while, you know that for my clear parts, I like to use Sharpies. They are transparent enough to be very convincing. And if I make a mistake, I have about two or three minutes before it dries that it will just literally wipe away. The cleaning is so easy. The problem with Sharpies, though, is as they start to age, the colors aren't as vibrant. And you could kind of get a hint of that here. The red and the orange, there's not really a clear, noticeable difference. They, they are different colors, but they're not bright red and they're not bright orange. So next time I'm in town, I might run by a hobby store, and if they have that super expensive Tamiya clear red and clear orange in stock, I might pick some up. We'll see.
arachnid. So now to install these, it's a little bit more difficult because my tweezers wouldn't fit down inside the little pocket that these sit in. So I made myself a little sticky stick. I hope that tool I just made is fairly self-explanatory. I want to tell you guys a secret. At the end, this decal ended up being just a little bit crooked, so please do not tell anybody. Now if you look right here, there's supposed to be the GTR decal that goes right smack dab on the grill. As this is a carryover for the road car, there's no provisions to put that decal there. So I'm going to go back to that for sale sign, only this time I'm going to make myself a little mounting badge bracket thing. If any of you guys ever build this car and go this same route, I highly recommend painting this before you apply the decal. It'll just make it a little bit easier when it comes time to do it later. Well, that was actually pretty easy. Now, these things were actually kind of difficult to install. That going that smooth was completely an accident. Now back to the Sharpie, and as you can see, I'm doing two coats of that here because it is really starting to get old. It's fading, and I, I need to replace these. These things, just like the headlight buckets, were extremely difficult to install, and I, I'm not even going to try to do it to a viewfinder. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick I learned a while ago when it comes to window masking. Now this trick, it really shines when it comes to the template being printed on just what is essentially a large piece of tape. 
Now one could still do it on the die cut templates. It just requires a whole lot more work and you gotta be super precise with where you make your cuts. Speaking of cutting, if you try to do all this in just one single shear, it'll come out a whole lot smoother. Because as you see here, I kind of walk the scissors up. It creates kind of a choppy, uneven cut. So try to avoid that whenever you can. Now the beauty of this trick is just how simple it really is. Peel up a corner and cut off just a little bit of the backing paper. Now the secret is here, since the backing paper is still on it, it will allow you to move it around and maneuver it exactly where it needs to be instead of trying to stab it in a perfect spot the first try. And once you get it exactly where you need it, just hold down on that sticky corner and then peel off the backing paper and lay it down. And you could probably see why this doesn't always work for the die cut templates, but you guys could still make it work with just a little bit more effort. That's all there is to that trick, guys. It's really that easy and simple. From here on out, it's just standard window masking and painting. Now, even though this has never really been a problem, and I'm always extremely careful, I still like to mask off the actual front of the clear part, because I'm still afraid somehow it's going to get some overspray on it. Oh, hey, look, my airbrush is functional again. So as you'll notice on my technique, I paint over and away from the edge of the template. Now there may be zero truth to what I'm about to say here, but I have it in my head that if you spray directly into the template, the paint, the air, all of that is going to somehow get under the template and bleed through. Now the first coat, ideally, you'll spray it on the light and that little bit of paint is going to kind of seal off the edge of the template and create like a gasket or a barrier. Now that alone should be enough to stop bleed through, but I don't know. Might as well take the extra precautions. Now two or three coats is really all you need. What you're really going for here is just even coverage. Now watch as when I get this peeled off, I start to walk around with my thumb and provide support everywhere. Because if you bend this too much, it will break, it will shatter. Clear parts are extremely fragile. So make sure that when you're pulling off that tape, it's not actually putting the part into a bind and bending it. And from here on out, it's just a matter of locating them and gluing them in with whatever type of glue you like to use on your clear parts. Do not worry about this floppy little guy right here. We're going to address that later. I actually found a perfect way to do that. This is one of those situations where I'd strongly advise against following the instructions because it wants you just to pull that down and glue it in. That's not always in perfect alignment. So instead what I'm going to do is just install the door and tape that in place, then glue the window to it. That way it will be glued in with the alignment of the body and not the window. And since I plan to display this closed, I care more about them perfect panel gaps 
than how it's going to look with the door open. So, yeah, get the door lined up and glue that window in. I'm using UV resin because it's perfect for clear parts. Now, even though the door does not sit that flush yet, I could live with the way this is all fitting. Yeah, that's going to work. Now I'd employ the services of that for sale sign just one last time. I don't know this part's legal name, but it's the wind deflector guard thingy for the windshield wiper. It's that guy right there, whatever he is. So I just shot in some flat black and it pops right into place. Now the instructions say that these wheels need to be a burnt iron color. I don't have any of that. What I do have though is some Zero Paints Meteor Gray for the Porsche 918 Spider. Now I understand art is subjective, especially when comparing it to a phone screen, but I cannot tell the difference between the two colors. They look close enough to being exactly the same to me, so I'm going to roll with it. And I was kind of hesitant to even mess around with these decals at first because it is a thin black line on a very dark background. I didn't think they would actually show up. They, uh, they didn't turn out too bad. I'm actually happy with how subtle that looks. I like it. You know it's about time to call it a night because I just about took a sip of my nasty decal water instead of my tasty old fashioned. When I do polycaps, I like to just bust them off the sprue and not clean them up. That little nubbin thing left behind, it creates a nice tight friction fit. Hey, we're in the garage. And I think I've showed this trick once before, so it might be a good idea to come back and revisit it. I'm what some people would call lazy, so if I could find a tool or a machine to speed up a process, I'm going to take full advantage of it. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to find a tire I haven't yet messed with. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop it onto a socket. In this case, it's the open end wrench side of a spark plug socket, which should be a 5H wrench if it matters. Then I'm just going to spin it against my emery board. And I am doing this over a trash can because it makes a hell of a mess. Just think of all the times you've done a burnout in your car or your truck or your tractor, whatever you drive. It's the same thing, just on a smaller scale. We're removing chunks of material at a very rapid pace. 
do this over a trash can if you do it like this. Now don't worry if it looks ugly like this, just run it over your hand. The oils from your fingers and your hand, it's going to clear off all that hazing. It's like magic. I don't know how that actually works. There's sawdust everywhere. It is almost time to make the body and the chassis become one. Which means now is the time to go through the bottom of the body, the interior, the chassis, all of it to get all the dust and fingerprints out. Now this might have been just a bit preemptive. As you probably saw, there was still tape in there holding the doors in position. So I removed all that, then went back and cleaned it all up again. This is all looking pretty good and clean. I'm happy with it. So let's go ahead and put these two together. Now I do bad mouth with Jimmy a lot, but I will say that when it comes to mating the chassis and the body together, this is some of the easy... Ooh, I think we got one. That vibrating was my phone just letting me know I got a new subscriber. Mr. Milton Dalton, if that's how that's pronounced, welcome aboard. Anywho, as I was saying, Fujimi, despite all their faults, they actually have a fairly decent body-to-chassis fitment. At the absolute max, the most I've had to do is stretch out the body and bend it a little bit just to get all the locating tabs locked in. Uh, you know what? I take that back. The Ferrari 330 P4... That was an absolute nightmare. So was the enthusiast version of the Countach. And I watched Justin's build of the Dino. That doesn't look that much fun either. Okay, to be fair, for the most part, some Fujimis are actually fairly decent to put together. Now I do know this is supposed to be kind of a quasi race car, and I'm I'm just not really feeling the slicks. I wasn't able to find any treaded tires of this profile, so later on down the road I might employ a 3D printer. Maybe we'll see. All it does is sit on a shelf after this, after all, so I might just leave it. And as usual, I always do a little sanity check. I press on each of the four corners just to make sure that each tire is touching the ground and it's setting level. And the tire to fender gap is also acceptable. I like this stance. This looks good. This rear wing was also a cause for great anger and frustration. Whomever designed this... I have absolutely nothing nice to say about your work. And with that mirror in place, we are finally done with this kit. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Mirror's crooked. Now 
Now we are finally done with this kit. So now all I need to do is wipe off all of my fingerprints, get it cleaned up, and it's ready for its photo shoot. Bonus content. Now some of you may remember me giving a brief tease of this during the unboxing. I truly thought the road car kit would work for the GTR. See those right there? Those are speaker grills. And as you can see, there are no speakers on the dashboard of this car. The only thing really that would carry over are the brakes. And I didn't want to gut this perfectly good detail upset just to get some brakes. As you can see there, they're not really that visible. Like, even the front grills on the bumper are so drastically different that I really had no idea what I was thinking. So the plan now is to track down a road car and get that built up in the future. So in the meantime, I'm going to close this back up, put it up here where it's going to be safe, and we'll deal with that later. Now with all that out of the way, it's time to get this guy right here cleaned up and get those photos done. That is it though guys, I truly hope you enjoyed this build and following along with me. I know that I made it seem easy, but I've built the road car, I know the hiccups of this kit, and I know how to fix them. Believe me when I say this kit has some serious problems, and if you don't know what you're going in for, you might have some problems. But you know what they say, like, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. I truly mean it. Thank you.